How you doing guys? This is Hybrid Still. Welcome to Pawn Shop Simulator. Now before I get into this, I've spent a couple of hours playing this game and I'm going to be completely and brutally honest. Even for the price tag, this game pushes the limits of how much you're willing to put up with just to play this game. Now this is version 1.0. This means apparently this isn't early access. This is the full game. So I'm going to get into this now. I'm actually going to continue my game because I actually played for a couple of hours. And I've got to be honest, after reading the very few comments about this game on Steam, I'm in complete agreement with how bad this actually is. And I'm going to be completely and brutally honest, it's not great. Alright, so, first off, love the setting. New York, some of the buildings aren't rendered. It's fantastic. So this is New York City. Um, we've got a couple of people that look like they're from country. We've got people with, like, the Miami Vice look. My health is just about to deteriorate because apparently I'm just about to die with no energy, so I should really get some sleep. But there we go. That's because I've been playing this for a couple of hours, and I really, really, really... So first off, we have this. This is a this is the local hardware shop, all right? Now, the local hardware shop looks like it's packing some punch. Bricks and mortar and road signs and cables and all this stuff, and it's like, oh my god, this is absolutely amazing. And then you interact with this person, you have to spend money on this stuff. Now, the paint, which was the primer, was $300. Buying the wood is $250. Bucks. Bricks is $500. And buying the metal piping stuff that you do for building and, you know, putting foundations out is $900. In all, so it's $9, $1,200, $1,700, $1,950, which doesn't sound a lot of money. But considering your entire job in this game is to sell stuff, you have to acquire inventory for you to actually buy stuff and sell stuff and carry on. Now, the problem with this is this game does not make it easy at all to earn money at all. And I'm going to show you this right now. Let me just cross the road and try not to get hit by a car because the hitboxes are so bad. You can get hit by a car even if the car is nowhere near you. So, first off... I'm going to go over to the pink building. Now, you may wonder what the pink building is in this game, and it's a bakery that sells pickle jars and fizzy drinks. And apparently, because that is life-saving, we're all good. So I'm going to go into the Atomic Bakery, which I have trouble getting into. I'm going to buy some bread and some juice. Now, if this looks familiar to you, if you ever played Bakery Simulator, which is made by DNA Games as well, very similar, right? Pretty much the same sort of like look, the pink, the blue, the nice. It actually does look pretty nice. I actually like this look. It's pretty cool. The downside to this is that this is basically the only place you can go to get stuff. Now, my energy, I'm about to collapse. I am going to basically, I can't even get out this door. All right, cool. That works. So let me just go back to my shop. We need to have a sleep, and then I can carry on. Nice buildings. I like this. The architecture in this game is really... The side buildings are really cool. But this is the shop, by the way. This is it. So what I need to do quickly before I'm going to pass out is get in here and go to sleep on my two-and-a-half-foot mattress. So we've seen the shops around. The other shop that wasn't rendered properly is actually a place where we can buy new racking. That's literally all it sells. Racking and some shelves. It doesn't sell anything else at all. Let me just go over and show you when the building actually loads because it doesn't load until you get close. So this is the other building that we can buy stuff from. It looks pretty good. We've got racking, we've got clove rattles, we've got sofas, we've got tables. We're all good. Let's talk to this guy and we can buy shelf and a large shelf, but that requires to get to level two. Now I'm going to show you the reason why getting to level two is a such a hard task that I don't want to keep playing this game. And I've enjoyed some of DNA games before. I've played Medieval Simulator by them. I actually liked that. It was nice running backwards and forwards, building up a shop and seeing progression was the big thing. Uh, we also played Trader Life Simulator, but in fairness, much more complete game. Have a shop, expand it, selling stuff, going to other shops, picking up bits and pieces. A game that was actually being worked on as well, which was quite nice. And then we have this. This is basically not a shop. It is a glorified thecking shed. A garage, if you will. Ah, oh, my shop is open. Let's serve a customer. And this is it. 
this is the whole game. Now, I get it. Like, we're going to expand into this back wall because this is where the next part of the shop is. Let me just read this book. Shop management. Upgrade shop to level two. This will unlock trading higher tier products with your customers. Requirements. Buying paint from material shop was 300. Buying the metal bars, the wood and the bricks. Don't forget, we said that works out to just under two grand, right? That's cool. Two thousand dollars. That shouldn't be too hard to earn. Now, don't forget, I've been playing this game for around two hours and I've got $197 to my name. And what do you want? Oh, you want to buy that off me for $42. Fantastic, $42. And now you want me to buy a washing basket. And you want me to buy a washing basket. Cool. So let me just pop this down on my shelf. Yeah, done. And that's it. That's the whole game. Now, the problem with this is that basically that thing that sold for $42, I spent $35 on to buy it to the shop to sell it back. In order for you to raise two grand to buy level two, you're going to be playing this game for like 15 to 20 hours because you only make four to six dollars per transaction. Maybe only ever three. Three bucks, four bucks, five bucks, done. And that's basically it. That's the whole game. Look, here you go. I'm going to spend... 20 but oh yeah so my profit that i just made i've now just rinsed into buying this lamp oh now you want me to buy the no now what's going to happen is you're going to be constantly sitting here pushing e and q by the way that's the entire control mechanism of this game e and q there's no way to get my hud up on the screen to see if i'm actually going to be doing stuff and the other way i've got to do stuff is to push j which brings up this book of player stats which should be on the screen as it's survival you need to know what's going on on your body before you actually make any decisions because that's how survival games work so we've got hunger thirst energy and health energy is cured by going to sleep thirst and hunger is cured by eating and sleeping health you have to go to the hospital and spend 90 dollars on medication because for some reason your 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 character is constantly sick which makes no sense the only reason why this should go down is if i'm being poisoned by a bug or something that's in a survival game that's genuinely out to kill me not pollution I mean, admittedly, yes, pollution is a killer. The reason why I find this fundamentally flawed compared to other DNA games is that this is it. There's no adventure. The reason why I could actually play Medieval Life Simulator is because there was an adventure. There was going to my shop and serving customers, building my shop up to have a better reputation, going to the trader market and seeing the difference in price. This game doesn't even have that you basically your entire sales comes from joe blogs walking down the street and thinking hey i've got a cup here i'm gonna sell it to this guy for nine quid and then i'm gonna sell it to someone else for 11 i make two dollars profit on a bloody cup it would take me hours to earn the first two grand just to get to level two on this game and then that's not even i mean let me just go in the side dude so we don't have to keep opening and closing the shop and then you have to earn another two and a half grand for a sign and 4,500 for legal papers to become a pawnbroker in this city. Now, let's say it takes me 15 hours to earn two and a half thousand dollars. That's after I've bought medicine for myself, food and drink for myself and slept on my two and a half foot mattress behind my desk. Not including buying new shelves to hold more product in this shop. This means I'm going to have to spend another 20 hours to install a sign and another maybe 25 to 40 hours doing a legal license for the store. Do I want to put 60 to 80 hours into this game whilst the gameplay is so monumentally boring that I want to sit here and play it? No. Now the thing is, I'm not the only person that's thinking this. Let's go to Twit. Let's go to Steam. That's it, three hours ago. This is 1.0, no early access, no future updates or content. Sounds about right for it, unfortunately, when it comes to DNA. After they get to a certain point and just chuck the game out, it's done. What the F is wrong with this developer? Why is DNA releasing one game after another? Not, uh, not one game will be finished. 
disgusting. DNA may be focused on finishing a game one by one instead of releasing one alpha after the other after the other. I can't even play this game. Apparently this guy, it just keeps crashing on him. And this guy's called Fun Hunter. If he played this game, I don't think he's going to be hunting fun very much in this game. Then we've got this. I can't. I don't, I don't think I can read this because, yeah, it's unfortunately it's um, it's a foreign language. I don't understand it. I'd have to go into Google Translate and go through um, Brazilian. Then we've got not worth the buy. Trade Life Simulator is there is their best game. Completely agree. Trade Life is a fantastic indie game. I really enjoy it. It's brilliant. On this game, buy things between $9 and $30 sale, then sell them for 3 to $6 above the amount paid. You need to wait a bit too long for customers. I can see how later game it might not matter. You've got to get to that later game first. Maybe need to increase uh, increase, increase football into the shop. Oh, football. I'd increase more people coming into the store, definitely. Uh, cheaper upgrades, a wholesale shop, yard sales, storage sales to get a different items for a cheaper price and you not bored standing there in one whole place. By the way, after two hours, I felt like my soul was leaking out my ass. I was turtle heading the whole time. I played for over an hour on one to save and earned $100. First upgrade was 2500 I did notice after day one I started to get new items, not a different in price. The first saved walk into a shop, then was hit by a car, lost $90. You could play this for hours being bored and getting nowhere. Exactly. The reason why I'm bringing all this up is because... In all honesty, if you have played something like, I don't know, Barn Finders, where you own a pawn shop, you go to different locations, you pick up items, there's a little bit of a story that's a little bit wacky, feels like somebody was tripping out on LSD when they were writing it, but it generally keeps you wanting to play because of the advancement in the game, the advancement in the shop, making things better, getting all of this stuff and making more money and just becoming great. And then you've got this. Now, I try to give indie games... A little bit of leeway because, you know, the studios aren't paid as much. Some of the developers aren't from rich countries where they have, like, lots and lots of massive amounts of technology. And I completely understand this. But when your best game was the third game ago, that's where your mark was. That is where you should have kept your games coming from. Not decreasing and degrading them down to a point where all I have to do is sit here and push bloody Q and bloody E and walk around a bit and maybe get hit by a car. That's the entire gameplay. That's it. The other thing about this game, and I only figured this out when I was just sitting here watching traffic, which is how bored I was. I was watching cars mounting the pavement and getting pushed by pedestrians. Now, I applied for this game because of its promise of being a pawnbroker simulator. I like being able to, like, I like tycoon-style games, making money, building things up, making things look great, and that's why I like things that I play. But when you apply for a game from a company you've worked for, worked with before, I say work with because I don't get paid to do this. I work with these companies to show the case their game. Medieval Life Simulator or Medieval Trading Simulator was in my... I actually didn't mind it. It was okay. I got to upgrade my shop. I got to upgrade bits and pieces. And I was genuinely quite happy. You know, it's a simplistic idea. And it was like, yeah, I'm, 1300s, shit, nothing else was going to happen. I'm going to trade and maybe get eaten by a wolf at one point. That was the whole game. But... Trader Life Simulator, you woke up in a house, you could furnish your house when, after you'd make money. You had a car to go to a shop, pick up wholesale stuff, take it to your store, sell it to people, and generally work on a convenience store. That was a good idea. And that was good. All you had to do was keep working on something like that to make it really good. Not keep releasing games and getting worse. Now, I know I'm digging into this a bit, and I'm being a little bit aggravated and annoyed and a little bit of a dickhead, and I get it. But when you've played a ton of indie games and you've seen potential from small studios, I know I keep harping on about it, but Hydroneer was made by one person. Yes, it had bugs and flaws and everything else, and it only charged me seven quid to play the game. And yes, I did buy the game. 
But look what happened to that game. It has evolved over time. Max and his team now have evolved the game to make it more inclusive for more people to become a better entity in, on this planet. And DNA, let's say they made Trader Life Simulator, and then that was a really good game. Then they made Medieval Trading Simulator, which notched it down a little bit, made it a bit more simplistic and a little bit less, but you still had the fundamentals of the original Trader Life. And then you have this, which takes away all of the freedom, and you stand behind a counter and you press Q and E and talk to the people who cannot line themselves up into a table. Who have superhuman strength to be able to push cars around off of, like, off of pavements and watching traffic go by. Because that's all you do. I hope. And I'm. This is one of the very first times I'm going to say this. I hope DNA actually see videos like this. Or the comments that come up on Steam. Because I feel that what they're doing is they're just churning out lots and lots of games. That are just never going to go anywhere. If you want to make a reputation for yourself to become a better developer, well known in the industry, and to become a more a, a bigger entity within this space, because there's a lot of developers out there making better games for cheap, and there's a lot of them. But when you have got a developer who's basically whacking out games for a couple of quid a time, it feels like a cash grab. And I know when I'm saying that, I mean, they're not making a lot of money from this because Steam takes a percentage and anyone can put a game up on Steam because it costs you like $100 and then you're done. You can put anything out. That's why there are so many shit games on Steam. But when you have got a developer who sort of went down this niche of doing sim games and sort of worked on this thing of actually doing something fairly good when I first started playing with them, that was a good thing. Trader Life, even though a lot of people probably don't know it exists or even like the idea, was a good game. It was complete-ish. There were things that could have still been added and optimization and so on and so forth, but that's just the joys of an indie game. But when that studio is taking its next game and making it less and making the next game and making it less and basically stripping back the game to basically bare necessity, it becomes stupid. I wanted to like this game. It was it was written up well. You became a pawnbroker. You were working in the city. You're trying to make a profit. You're building up your dad's old business because he's died or got shot by gangsters. I don't know. But the way this game was pushed and looks, it looks good. What the feck happened to the gameplay? And I... I try not to swear in like little like speech videos like this or talk about anything within this game. I try to be positive, but it's really hard when you're seeing games constantly coming out from a developer and them getting less and less intuitive. And this is the problem because this game is like, hey, it's released. It's 1.0. Check out this. It's, there's no bugs. It's 1.0. There's a building over there that hasn't loaded. I don't expect that in a finished game. For I've never actively sat here playing somebody's game and said, I don't want to play this anymore, I'm going to refund it. I've never said that before. And I've never sat here doing these videos and said, I don't want to work with this company all the while that this is their mentality. And I know that sounds crap of me, but that's where we're at. I've, I've played games that have cost me pennies. And they have been better than this. This game feels like someone sucked the fun out of a balloon. And just left you the rubbery bit on the end and just threw it in the corner and said go and have some fun. And I don't know what to do. Just not happy with it. I mean if you think, you're, if you think I'm overreacting, go over to Steam now. Go and pick it up. If you haven't refunded this game within the two to four hour allotted time that steam give you i'd love to hear your comment i really would it's cheap as chips game go out and pick it up if you really want but i would say you're wasting i would say you're wasting your time and your money catch you later